Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, today, I'm going to set out uh, how Hallward Academy is going to reopen. Um, I know that we've been a little bit quiet just recently, but um, we wanted to get this right before we announced anything to parents and to pupils. <clears throat> There's been lots and lots of government guidance that's been going around, and I, uh, we are really confident now that we, we know exactly how we can reopen on the 1st of June. Right then, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some information with you all, um, and then... I'll put all this into a letter and we'll put all this information out onto uh, social media so it's there for you, um, for, ready for after half term. So, so I've just had a breakfast, so it's a bit stuck in my teeth. That's terrible, isn't it? Right then, so first of all, I want to say a big thank you to everybody. Um, everybody within school has been working really, really hard. Um, lots and lots of hours have been spent trying to get together a plan that makes everything in school really safe. So uh, I'd like to say a big thank you to all the staff. They've worked tirelessly, absolutely tirelessly over this last few weeks. Uh, and a big thank you to all our parents and pupils. The pupils have been amazing. The work that's been coming through and the commitment to your home learning has been fantastic. And some of the messages that have been going on to the uh, website, the thank you messages has been amazing. Really, really proud of everybody. So thank you very much. Um, so then, uh, who can come to school? We are allowing back, as per government guidance, the F1s, but that'll be the N2s only. We're not allowing N1s back just yet. Um, just because of uh, space uh, and ratios and also some children haven't started school yet and I just feel that if they were to come back in this current situation it, it's not the best idea it's not the best way to start your first ever journey into school not being allowed to touch anybody or anything so we're just going to go with the children that are currently uh, in N2. Uh, then we've got reception uh, that's absolutely fine. We don't have many children in reception anyway. So, and we've got two nice big rooms. Um, year one are all coming back and year six. Um, key workers and our vulnerable children. So that's absolutely fine. We are going to have to be really strict with the uh, key worker group. There is government guidance on that. Um, so if you're not a key worker, we it's just really unfortunate. We just won't be able to take you. Um, we are really stretched. To capacity um so unfortunately some of the children may or may not be happy but if you've got a child in year three and year six only the year six child can come back um but we will look to get everybody back as soon as possible but we have to wait for the government to give us the go ahead with that um i've just remembered i am sharing my screen aren't i yes i don't want to do that one again do i uh what time will school open and close because of all the social distancing rules and regulations and because of everything else that's going on, um, we've come up with, the, with this plan initially. Um, as we get more confident and things and get things get better, we will we will change and get trying to get back to some normality. But for now, um, F1 will be eight forty five until two fifteen pm. F2 9 am to two thirty. Year one uh, eight forty five to two fifteen. Year six will be eight thirty to two, and then the vulnerable workers will be from eight forty five until three pm. Um, so it says that if you have multiple children, we don't expect you to A, hang about or B, go home. So if, for example, you have a child in F2 in year six, you can bring them um, at 9 a.m. If you have a child in year one and year six and you bring them at 8.45, just bring them with the youngest child's um, start time. Just the, the, the reason for this is... Um, purely just to avoid the traffic in and around school. If for whatever reason you say, for example, your child has to come at nine o'clock and you have to go to work, just phone the office, speak to the class teacher. We can be accommodating with this. This is, um, this is just to ease traffic around school, basically. So as it stands, we will be closed on a Friday. Um, and the reason for this, the whole of the Friday, and the reason for this is um is because we um there are certain things that we have to do in school and we can't do them in this current um rotor so for example teachers need uh, are entitled to so much time to plan and prepare and we can't do that in school and that's because normally the class would be covered by another adult that is not happening children uh, the class will not be covered 
by any other adult unless it's absolutely, absolutely necessary. Uh, and then we'll have social distancing procedures in place for that. So this is to protect everybody. So I know it's maybe a bit of a pain not being open on the Friday, but in order for us to be able to continue the home learning, to be able to keep the school, to be able to keep the school clean, and to be able to continue to support the pupils outside of school, we need the Friday, the full Friday. Um, normally there'd be lots of cover going on in school, which was which is fine, it's manageable, but that just can't happen. And also because of the staffing ratios, but not the staffing ratio, because of the staffing being so tight um, and we needed so many staff down in key stage one and F, uh, in, in foundation, we can only do year six over two days. So what that means is, and you will be contacted if you haven't been already, we've got 45 pupils in year six. We've had to split them into two groups, an A and a B group. So A will come in for Monday, Tuesday, and B will come in for Wednesday, Thursday. Um, we see this is the most sensible option. Um, again, it's not ideal for those poor year sixes, but it's at the minute it's the safest option we've got um, with the current staffing we've got. And as soon as that changes, then we can we can we can change that as well. So you can see here from the map we've got drop off points. So if you look at the playground, it's all zoned. Um, each uh, we call them bubbles, will be allocated a zone, and they won't be allowed to cross that zone. Then the red markings um if you can see my arrow so for example nursery here we've got two entrances here so nursery are going to come in where everybody would normally come in for foundation and then reception that's so that's miss gray's class and miss uh, sinclair's class will come in just next to the uh, main entrance there's a, uh, a red fire door um we're going to open that we sometimes let the children out of it uh during the discos and stuff so you're going to come in that way and that way we can come down both corridors safely uh in year one we've got all of the doors down key stage one and they'll all be open and marked out for you um, and we'll also have uh lines all marked out for you to line up um on the playground and it's really simple for year year six we've got the two we've got the hall door there which we normally come out of anyway. And then we've also got the fire door there uh, in key stage uh, two for year six, which we, which we use anyway. I think year four normally use that. And then we've got the key worker group, which will be as normal from uh, the year three um, year three area. So as you can see, it's all very, very clear. We will all know exactly what we're doing. Um, there's been a lot of work gone into that. Right then, so who will teach my children? Right then, so this is where it gets complicated. So Miss Dickin and Miss Foster will teach F1 as per. Uh, in F2, uh, Miss Gray and Miss Sinclair, accompanied by other adults. So we've got some, we've got TAs in there. And the, at the minute, there's, there are doors between the two. They will be sectioned off, so there's no... Um, no crossover. In year one, we've got Miss Annandale, Miss Bernie, Miss Wynne and Miss Andrews. So I'm having to pull the year three teachers um, across into year one. In year six, we've got Mr. Havercroft and Miss Mansfield. They will class share. They will um, they will have an A and a B. So Mr. Havercroft, for example, will be in for two days. Miss Mansfield will be in for two days. And then Miss Educare will do uh, a group as well. Uh, Mr. Hampson, Mrs. Brown, Mrs. Gibbs and Miss Palmer will do inclusion. So look after all things uh, pastoral for us. And then our key worker group will be, uh, oh, there's not space there in my, Miss Mar Miss Marrett, Miss Stevenson and Miss Leverage. Um, we do not have all our teachers and TAs for whatever reason. I can't go into that, but so we are running, running on limited capacity. There will be TAs and there'll be plenty of adults um, and so we can staff what we've got, but that's the reason for um, teachers being in other locations and TAs being in other locations. Um, okay. Please don't worry about um, about that. They're all great teachers, as, as you know, um, and it will take, you know, Miss Wynne and Miss Andrews a little time to get to know those year ones, but it's nothing that they're not used to. So that that won't be, uh, won't be an issue. Um, and for year six, they've got Miss Educare and they've had Mr. Havercroft and Miss Mansfield before, so it's, it's not too, too unfamiliar. Um, so what about the home learning then? So the home learning is going to unfortunately look a little bit different because as you can see, all our teachers are teaching now. Miss Vickers will look after years five and six. Uh, Miss Arnold will look after, Miss Arnold and Miss Shubrook will look after years three and four, and then Miss Smith will look after year one and two. 
F1 will be that will be the same as normal, and we will still be putting some content on there for F2 as well. Um, it's gone really, really well as the home line. I was so impressed with you all, but it's not going to be at the same capacity as as it was, and that's really, really unfortunate. But the teachers have got to teach now, um, and and part of the reason um, for closing early in a, a in an afternoon um, as well as uh, the Friday is so that we can try and keep all this going uh, and, and do other things as well because there's a lot there's a lot to do as you can imagine so i'm going to take you to our new home learning uh, miss arnold has been so busy with this so as from the first of june this is what your virtual classroom is going to look like they're really cool this is what i was on about these um bit emojis i got it right uh, bit emojis so all of your classrooms will look like this and then if you can see my mouse there if i hover over the tv uh, the monitors there um if you click the link it will take you to tt rockstars if you click the times table square there it will take you to your times tables uh, if you, I don't even know what this avocado is going to do. I, it's got a sweatband on. I think it's some PA. Let's have a look. Go noodle. There we go. Good at this, aren't I? So each week, all of your virtual classrooms will change. Um, and that's, I think that's a link to Class Dojo. Yeah. Uh, there'll be uh, links to uh, reading and uh, everything you need will all be in your virtual classroom. So you can click the link and it will take you wherever you need to be. So much effort has gone into these virtual classrooms. I think they're absolutely amazing. I'm so proud of the team for what they've done with these. Um, and it's a bit jazzy and it's a bit nice. So, and then, so the idea being that it's a bit more of a pick and mix so that children can access what they want to access, but it's all been really carefully thought about um for uh each year group um so yeah uh so let me go back to this right there's so the social distancing the, the bit that you're all going to be the most uh, the most worried about so children will be in bubbles um so for example in, in year one there will be four bubbles also going to be five it's actually five um and there'll be no cross contamination if if the children are in that bubble the staff are in that bubble and they won't leave it. Um, children have separate play times, lunch times, and unfortunately, as sad as this is, they, they won't be able to mix together either. Um, we, we've endeavoured to get children into the, the right group um, to put them with their friends. But as you can imagine, that is just it's a logistical nightmare. Um, and we've, we've done our absolute best, but as soon as we come back in September, in September it, on the 1st of June, the minute they enter that classroom, there is no room for manoeuvre. Um, we just can't, we just can't do that. So like I said, lunches will be in classrooms. They'll then go from their classroom and they'll be walked down to the playground. They'll be greeted by the lunchtime supervisors. They'll go out to play and then they'll be walked back to their classroom. And the same for break time as well. We're going to have uh, longer break times, longer lunch times. So we've got lots of um, fresh air. And wherever learning can take place outside, it will do. Um, social distance will be used. Social distancing will be used at all times. There'll be no assemblies. Um, there'll be no teachers popping from one classroom to the other. If I do a walk around to see the pupils, I'll put my mask on, I'll make sure I hand wash before I go into each classroom, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, All the guidance for staff is really, really clear. Um, parents must line up on the allocated markings, just like you go into the supermarket. The office will be closed. We cannot afford for um, parents um, to be in the office at this time because it's, ju it's just the, the, the risk of cross-contamination. Um, if you need an appointment, it will be by phone only. Children cannot be collected early because that means that staff have then, you've then got to come into the office. You've then, you've then got to send staff into classrooms. If for whatever reason you do need your child to be collected early, you need to book that in. You need to tell the class teacher the day before and then they can be sent to the office um, and it can be all very structured. And you must be on time. If we've got loads of people coming in late, we're going to have people by the door. That means we've got staff to take. That means staff have then got to take them into other classrooms. And we're trying as best we can to keep everybody uh, as contained as possible. Um, in, I'll just go back on actually. In terms of the social distancing, all the classrooms have been stripped out. We've taken out uh, soft toys. Um, 
all additional furnishings that don't need to be there. We've got pictures of those and they'll be put onto social media later on today or during the week to show you how it will look. Each child has a desk, each child has a tray, each child has their own pens, pencils, they're gonna have Ziploc bags. It's all theirs. It will not be touched by anybody other than that child. And um, there'll also be um, cleaning kits in classrooms for teachers to clean down regularly. Got plenty of hand sanitizer, soap. The toilets will be available and children will be supervised to go to the toilet. They'll wash their hands coming in and out. Um, um, so that we've kind of got all that in place, really. Um, also, right, so in terms of PPE, children do not wear PPE and will not be allowed to wear PPE in school. Um, staff will only wear PPE for intimate care and first aid purposes. If I have to go around, I will obviously wear PPE. If they're on gate duty, you might see me with a mask on. Um, but other than that, it's regular hand washing. Uh, when we talk about intimate care and first aid, intimate care is if we have to do nappy changing, we'll put, uh, we've got shields, we've got masks, uh, we've got gloves, and we'll have um, disposable pinners. The reason children don't wear PPE is because it has to be taken on and off properly. If you are wearing gloves and you wear them all day and don't wash your hands, it's just as bad. It's just as bad. Also with the mask, if you if a, if the mask becomes infected, you touch the mask and then touch surfaces, it's absolutely pointless. So um, that's really, really important. So for example, and also if, um, if we do get any confirmed cases of COVID-19, say for example, uh, I'm just thinking of a year one class, Miss Fernie, not that she has been, or I'm sure she won't because we'll be all safe, was to test positive, um, the whole class would have to self-isolate for 14 days. So that's how strict we've got to be. That's why there could be no cross-contamination. So if Miss Fernie went from one class to another and she went into Miss Annandale's class, we'd have to self-isolate both classes. Um, so we're really, really strict on that. And that's why we don't want outside agencies. That's why we don't want parents coming in because if, that, if somebody becomes infected, we're going to have to shut the school down. Uh, it's, we've got to be really, really stringent with this. We can't have um, a lapse in this because it's really important we get it right. Um, so you will not be allowed in the school office. You'll be spoken to by the intercom. If you do come, please try and avoid it at all costs. If you do have to come into the office, to, for example, to pick up a child if they're really poorly, then it will be one, child, one adult at a time. Um, we're going to have collection points outside like we have done for dropping items off such as bags and monies and pat lunches, et cetera. To sign up to parent pay, that's the easiest way. Um, there'll be no face-to-face -face meetings with myself, Mrs. Brown, um, anybody who you'd normally have a face-to-face -face with. It just can't happen. Um, we will be contactable via telephone, or if you want to um, do a hangout with us, um, we can use Zoom or we can use Google Meets, that kind of thing. That's not a problem. We can do all of that. Uh, so um, other bits, really. School will be closed over the half term. The staff are exhausted. The children will be exhausted because they've been working so hard. Um, it's time to relax. Um, you just need to enjoy half time. A letter will come out with all of this information on. Uh, Miss Arnold is currently working on an information booklet for you with it all in. As it stands, the meal vouchers, the bane of my existence, we are not sure what is happening after half term. We need to wait for the government to say whether or not they're funding it. However, they are funding over half term, so they will come out on Monday. It's been authorised. I've looked on the system and it's been fulfilled. There should be no issues with it coming out on Monday. If there are, send me a message and I will get on it for you straight away. Um, I'm not checking emails and messages quite as often during the holidays. Got lots of DIY to do. Um, but I will endeavour to uh, get those messages sorted. I get my messages answered and, and any queries sorted. But until then, stay safe and have a lovely half-term break.